Yeah. Um, so welcome everyone to, I think this is the final talk in our CRLD seminar series for this year. Um, and it's my very great pleasure to introduce um, Dr. Yoshiyuki Asahi. So he is Associate Professor of Linguistics at the um, National Institute for Japanese Languages and Linguistics in uh, Tachikawa, which I've actually been to in Western um, Tokyo. And he completed um, his PhD at the University of Osaka in 2004 on the social linguistic study of new language variety formation um, in Newtown. Um, and Yoshi is quite well known within the fields of um, dialectology and especially Japanese dialectology and language variation and change. So it's my great pleasure to introduce him on this topic today on the emergence of multicultural Tokyo Japanese possibilities and prospects. Okay, so should I, oh. Hey, is it working well or not? No, then I can turn off the mic microphone, then the user mic then. Yeah, so I just turn it off microphone, then speak up. Please come up if you can hear me well. Okay. Yes. We can't hear. Yes. And now we, you can hear. It's okay now. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay. Good. Okay, thank you very much for the very kind introduction, James. Uh, pleasure to have this opportunity to speak to you about the, my, the ongoing project, uh, which is on the Mao Cultural Tokyo Japanese project. So um, as it is an ongoing project, and I'm not really telling you something that I have you know, accumulated for the last uh, 10, 20 years. This is something that I'm just starting, and I'm getting an idea of where to go and uh, what kind of the uh, resources I can access to. And also the uh, coming here to expand my academic network uh, to the scholars here at the lateral uh, who might be interested in the topic that I'm raising today. <clears throat> and uh, it's going to be about one hour, so I try to make it as brief as possible, although the lot map is a little lengthy. Mm -hmm. But uh, let me start with the uh, description of the Japanese in Japan, uh, then moving to the uh, demographic history. And the definition of immigrant in, in, in Japan to the same as in Australia. Then, other people in uh, expatriate communities uh, in terms of the social network, transnational movement, so on. And uh, then, then, five and six is something from the, the, the previous literature and, uh, and also the survey which I conducted last year. Then, the last three points from seven to nine is the kind of summary of my book. Um, suggestion to you. So, if you have you know, been asked a kind of big question like the how many languages do you think that the people speak in Japan, then many, especially if you are conservative, they say, well, Japanese. No IG, no aliens, Japanese, 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 Japanese. So, if you want to live there, just expect it to speak Japanese. Okay. So, having a Sounds of the right wing, then we say that Japanese, and the Japanese have a 100% racial purity, 
for Japanese uh, daily xenophobia, or maybe they some of them talking about the isolationism to the country itself. So it's kind of the giving some ideological issues uh, about the country itself. I'm not really talking about that topic today, but actually the 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 idea is that the country widely for Japan is not really homogeneous and not really monolingual. But actually, it's that thing that I asked question to the undergrad student at Stock University in Tokyo about the the, the state of I and uh, some of them say oh, that it's a dialect of Japanese. This, Unfortunately, they have not a chance to listen to the actual sound of my language. It's kind of the, something that existed long time ago. Maybe they are maybe aware of the people in Ohio, but they are not really listening to the language itself. So whenever I have like, any classes on the introductory course in Japanese linguistics or social linguistics, I usually do the, the Ainu animation, uh, or the previous in animation speak Ainu. And giving you ideas of how the Ainu language sounds to them and the highlighting the differences between two languages. It's actually another language. Actually, the, the, the photo you can see on the photo on the right is uh, actually the, the kind of the something that is related to the idea of the Japan being you know, highly homogeneous or something that uh, have the, the belief of uh, standard varieties and it's uh, the police to get widespread throughout the country and late. 20th century, uh, we have a system called Hogan Kudan. It's a dialect part, which is a punishment that to the day the school teacher used when the student or pupil speak a word of dialect in the classroom. Mm -hmm. So they, they, they put up, you can see on the bottom, quite the here, it's a Hogan Kudan, you know, in a, in a wooden made part, and that both students in a, a pretty long. But the scholar is uh, the Takeshi Shibata, uh, he was a professor of linguistics at the University of Tokyo. He's a linguist, social linguist, leading linguist at the time, wearing the four games with that, being a highly ironic you know, being. You know, he knows about language in Okinawa, the language is Japanese style too. And pretty now, very really good on. And uh, I really like the, the photo, so I just try to tell people that. You know, he himself put it on. And uh, I kind of be telling you about the, the idea of the, you know, the standard Japanese education being widespread, its policy and punishment, and the linguist put it on to be going against the idea. So, as I mentioned earlier, the Japanese, Japan has been uh, um, quite uh, heterogeneous and uh, multilingual too. Actually, if you have a debate or a discussion about when and how the Japanese language itself is formulated, we haven't got any, got any conclusion yet, but some ideas is talking about the contact between the languages from the north and languages in the south. We don't know yet, but, uh, but being a Japanese native, you know, living in Tokyo and traveling around the country, then I have a impression that you know, the way how people look is quite different, you know, from the people from the north to the south. That having the data should be the, the people like Ainu or Koreans, uh, Chinese or Ukrainians, they existing in the history in the country. And the place I live is uh, the, uh, the suburb of Tokyo, metropolitan architecture. Uh, actually, we have the community of the Koreans uh, who migrated and stayed in Japan from the 6th century. I know and we have uh, a shrine called Koma Jinja. Actually, Koma actually is a word for Korean. So we have a kind of long-term history and relations. So the, the idea may be something to do with the Buddhism or the Namban Bunpa or Western culture in the 14th, 15th century, mainly from the Portuguese. The, in the Middle period in the 16th, 19th century, you have the trade with the China and the Netherlands. We have a trading post in the small islands of the uh, state of Hirado in the Asahi Western part of Japan. Then we have Dutch study, veterans. Then we have major restorations at the end of the 19th century. Then we have English studies widespread. That folded with the, 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 the number of the long words in Japanese in different, in different eras or different centuries in the history of Japan. 
then starting off with the uh, uh, increase of the Sanskrit, then we have Portuguese, Dutch, French, then have German, French, and uh, Russian, Italian, plus English after the uh, the isolation policy or major restrictions uh, at the end of the 19th century. We have now a bunch of the long word from English language. But talking about expatriate communities, we have the you know quite long established gay communities uh, with the uh, you know, Chinese uh, in Yokohama in the Chinatown in Kobe, and also in Kobe and Yokohama. Then we have the Yoshima, which is Dutch island, then Koreans uh, in Osaka, uh, which I enjoy conversation with uh Taoisan uh, local the, at the university in Justin Paul. And also the uh, we have the Ryukyu ones in Okinawa from the beginning of history. I in Hokkaido and Tohoku, and uh, they are actually they from, uh, you know, maybe from Ainu, maybe from uh, northern, much further northern areas like uh, Sahalin or Kuya Islands or Kamchatka, and uh, so on and so forth. So we have quite different ethnicities moving around the language in time, and we have expatriate community from long time. So in the post-war period, we have witnessed the increase of the number of foreigners living in the country. Especially now in the year of 2020, that's the kind of this very starting stage of the corona pandemic. Actually, we saw a little bit decrease of the population of the foreign residents in the country. But in the time of the 2020, we have about 22.2% of the total populations are foreign residents. But the point I want to focus is, is actually the about the mid eighties up to today, the number actually got tripled from the something like the eighty four thousand to the two hundred eighty eight thousand in total. That increase would be something to do with the uh, formulations of expatriate communities in different parts of the country. But actually, the, the talk main topic for today. Is to do with uh, a new community establishing in the greater Tokyo. Actually, I'm not really making a, a clear point differences between the greater Tokyo and Kanto. If you are if you're Japanese, if, uh, the Japanese, you are maybe aware of this kanji or Chinese characters say Kanto is uh, the name of the region of the place, would be that more of the identical uh, with the area which I'm showing you now. But actually, you want to use uh, Greater Tokyo uh, to, 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 just because of the topic I'm raising, which is something to do with the Tokyo Japanese in a much cultural context. Tokyo places on the red dot is actually the places uh, where I visited and also the places where we have the expatriate community. The places in the middle, there's a blue circle, and Hano is where I live. At. So don't worry, you're very few non Japanese living in the Hanbei, but other areas are plenty. The expat community, you can you are able to access to these languages uh, Nepalese, Indians, or Hindi, <coughs> Pakistan, or Peruvian, Spanish, Mongolia, Bang Bangla, Persian, and so on. Tokos. And uh, then you can enjoy the, all the visiting places. Uh, this is something that I did in a time of the corona pandemic, uh, where uh, you are not. Allowed to make any international business trips, you can stay in the same prefectures. You know that's kind of the, you know, kind of the not order but a favor from the local government. But the thing that I thought I should do is moving around my neighborhood and uh, driving around the same prefectures or neighboring prefectures. So this is actually one of the the closest place from Hachikawa, and uh, that's a Nepalese community. And uh, then we have enjoyed this kind of the cuisine. Plus the shops uh, just selling all the spices and uh, all the doing the remittance of the money and so on and so forth. And go to the Kusta, have the uh, US Army base for Kusta. Actually, uh, if you have uh, found the guest, uh, the VIP guest from the United States, after they fly to Kusta, then they go to the, they take another kind of something to fly to the main part of the popular. But uh, there you have the, the new emerging uh, communities of Vietnamese, uh, and they have some shops and grocery stores opening. They go to the Kanagawa, which is another place for Dama. Also have a US base too. They are Indian communities. Uh, you can see this kind of restaurants run easily. 
then inside of the restaurant, you can see this kind of the menus. And I think that if you are uh, elderly uh, gentlemen, ladies, Japanese ladies, you have no idea about foreign languages, and they don't know what to say. But they speak a very good Japanese. India are very good Japanese speakers. I'm sure that they can explain in Japanese to them. But this is mainly for their compatriots. And I in this biryani house that I visited, and I could see how many Indians in having conversation in their language. I couldn't identify which one. But talking about Indians, we have the, uh, another uh, community in the eastern part of Tokyo called Hasai, which is about 20, no less than half an hour trip by train from the Tokyo station. But it's a well known community about Indians. And uh, this is an uh, uh, Indian sweet store. Uh, it's like, a, for us, it looks look like the, you know, that the sweet shop from France or something. Uh, we are aware of the you know, Western cultures. But they are purely Indian sweet shop. And uh, there's only one I know that they 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 play just value on the you know decency on the design and uh, this was really nice for looking the sweet store. And uh, then I went and I bought a uh, couple of sweet with super sweet sweet and uh, then I couldn't stand eating, but uh, actually the, I met people. And uh, had a conversation with them. But usually, uh, the people I meet in this expatriate community, they are more or less in a working class people and speaking, you know, they are Japanese in somehow in their way. It's like intermediate Japanese or beginners, so very limited amount of vocabularies. But they, their Japanese is very good. And I'm giving them different impressions about the Japanese that they. If you close, it is another big destination in Tokyo, you have a chance to go for your tourism. Then you can see the, uh, and enjoy the another Chinatown, uh, which is formulated from uh, about the time of 2000. Then have uh, enjoyed the peace in the people from the uh, northeastern part of China, mainly Koreans, Chinese, and then also together with the people from uh, uh, the uh, Uyghur and all other Western part. There's northern part of China uh, using their language uh, together with the Chinese cultures. Then this is something that uh, actually you you choose to use this for for the for this talk. I uh, you know that I think the face mask that can be used. Is it a mask can be used as the please mask up please mask up please mask up yeah. Okay. I found it's more like the next song kind of uh please song like the mean a dead song, but Japanese would have to say yes song or please not three song. But this is a supermarket located in uh, Misato, city in Saitama. It's the eastern part of Saitama. And uh, then where you have this Hada supermarket so called Bongo Bazaar. This is a very unique best new supermarket. And if you have then I first went there. I saw the many, you know, have a huge pump in them. They have you know, so many cars coming into the country park and you go and buy stuff. But if you look at the plane, uh, you see that you know cars from different parts of the country, not only from the, the neighboring, you know, there's a district in Saitan, but from other prefectures too. Then this place is actually for uh, the kind of the using for the uh, uh, for the uh, diplomat. Or the embassy uh, staff you know, from the, the countries where they have this uh, halal system. And the language actually is being widely used in the store too. So, um, then approaches for the, you know, showing the photos, the language part, which should be, this, I don't know which language that they use for this, but the thing I can tell is the uh, first of the dear staff, the English, English Japanese. And the three other languages are written, maybe the uh, Nepalese or maybe uh, Yanganese or something. Uh, could be if you know the speech language of which script is. But the point is that uh, they, they use uh, multilingual signs in a supermarket and also showing the three types of categories like for the uh, 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 
Muslim, then the uh, for the uh, Muslim, the so and so, so that they catalyze the type of the uh, item in relation to the ingredient, to both the ingredients where the Muslim are uh, not eat the candy and so on. That classification is also found in the supermarket too. Going up to the Guma, they have this, uh, the most uh, in, uh, for the for the people living there, uh, having uh, the uh, uh, donation in the katakanas or in Japanese photography, and also the language, which I couldn't identify which language is uh, in the language is of the brain. And uh, this is most, and, uh, it's kind of the most directly two minutes away from the station. So, that they uh, you know, you know, the Japanese sense is quite you know. The Guma, we have a kind of well known big communities for the Brazilians. They have uh, seen this kind of big uh, sign in uh, Portuguese, uh, which I'm sure that James would like it. <laughs> and, uh, and I can see if you, I've been there a couple of times now, and I see if I see somebody in a car driving from the other side. Street, you can see like nine out of ten actually are not Japanese. They are Brazilians or somewhere I don't know, but they are not really Japanese. But here they have the uh, the signs in the Portuguese and down in flat Japanese. They have given the items uh, from Brazil and also from a uh, uh, Vietnamese or Vietnam or Thailand. And then another supermarket having the Sign in uh, in the class of Portuguese, I hope, I think. Then it's kind of the Japanese so too nice and uh, telling them where the toilet is located. It's outside. And uh, then last week, Portuguese uh, translation added. Then Tatebayashi is another name, it's a neighbor town of uh, Boichumi, where the Nepalinese are uh, they have a uh, community. And uh, there's uh, one of the uh, few shops around. In the city of Then Anandawa is a well known uh, in Chinatown, existed from the 19th century alone. Actually, kind of the tourist destination for many Japanese nowadays, but they have been, uh, they are on the, the Chinese expatriate uh, community history too. The Chiba and the Persian communities, it is nothing there to write, uh, fields, the right uh, field. Nice and then good making fields, and uh, then this factory and all the diversion actually get together and work together, not live together, but they do a destination for their work and for the social part too. The Aikawa, which I'm going to talk about a little bit more later, and about that the town located in the western end of Kanagawa, they have a Peruvian community, and uh, then I'm sharing that with my. In my class on Japanese linguistics, where I have some students from the Mexico or the uh, Colombia, and then they are talking about how that is the uh, writing or Spanish used here look different or sounds different to them. And we have had uh, some discussion about it, but how many Peruvian uh, students there? This is a statistic from the Daigyu by Kokujin. Sorry, it's only for me putting that in Japanese, but actually, the registered uh, foreigners uh, at the uh, 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 Japanese government. Uh, this is the statistics about the, the, the 25, the top the, uh, uh, cities, uh, the towns, uh, world in Tokyo, uh, have the you know, populations. Majority of them actually have been centered in Tokyo. And then together with that, we have the, either the Saitama, Chiba, Kanagawa actually added on the list. That means uh, now we have the many daily life which they're giving us not, not permanent, not nothing but the nothing by Japanese, but they are unregistered foreigners. Uh, they have, a, you know, in their inhabitants, mainly in the southern part of the country. So to combine the, these statistics uh, with the, uh, the graph I shown in terms of the number of foreigners in the country that the increase will be to do with the uh, southernness communities in the, in the council region. So, so maybe I'm, I'm purely Japanese, so I might be uh, having this kind of question myself. 
actually they may be you know people living there of course the immigrants and uh but i'm talking about the people japanese living in the country itself and i'm actually i'm the one of the one who been living in tokyo for 20 years i'm going to say that i'm an immigrant too in the same way that you might be immigrant somewhere and uh, then somehow you have to say oh you you'll be living here in melbourne say for say 20 years 30 years then you'll be adjusting your language to some ways and uh, maybe acquiring another second or third your English dialect or accent and that might be the same or different from your first and your second accent. So in that context, I'm acquiring the, I acquired this now with a dialect, first native dialect, then went to Osaka for my PhD study, then I acquired the Osaka dialect for my second dialect, and now I'm in a Tokyo Japanese street. But my Tokyo Japanese speaking in a strict sense is not the same as one to the native Tokyo Japanese speakers. But I think is I'm not really noticing, say, a very detailed accentuation patterns. We have a, I'm employing a different system. But don't care about it. As I you know, I don't think it's kind of thing, something I can manage to correct at the end. I know it's different, but I decided not to care about it too much. So if you live in uh, Tokyo and Osaka, then you have Kobe, you have a Kenjin by, it's a Kenjin as a, it's a living protection uh, person, uh, both in a certain state like Victoria, maybe from the, uh, uh, from say, uh, in Tokyo or Kumamoto, whatever, the uh, city names or prefecture names, they have a uh, living union or kind of the association of the same Kenjin by uh, getting opportunity that are getting together, then maintaining their um, um, the connections among the people in the, in the city of Kobe or Tokyo, one of maybe the connection with their own presence. That kind of association exists in a, in a expatriate community, Japanese community outside of the country, especially the Nikkei community in the Americas. Yes, they have uh, many Kenjin guys around, and I'm sure that you have the same one in Brazil. So we everybody will be immigrant anyway. So this is a statistic on the map from uh, the survey results of that of my institute uh, back in the late 70s or early 80s. Uh, that to, to give an idea of the speech part of Japan, we have more uh, uh, the democratic patterns either to Tokyo and Osaka. I'm sure I hope that you are I can identify this is Tokyo. Okay? And if you live in Tokyo, you would have kind of the stereotypical view. Which I have is that, that actually, if you go and leave Tokyo, you can you have a better chance to see people from the north. Tohoku, maybe central Japan, go to Tokyo. From the west, this is where Osaka is located. This is Kyoto, this is Kobe. Right? If you've been to Japan, you know what I mean. But Osaka, the second largest city, we have immigrations from the western part of Japan. So two big city, different background. So Tokyo is more with east, western, east and northern part of Japan migration, and also by its more western, with western, western migration. That constitutes, you know, linguistically speaking, yes, we have a differences between the languages, which in Osaka and Tokyo in many ways. And also the, the old immigrants living in Osaka or in Tokyo from different parts of the country, uh, acquiring a local people, a local dialect in some kind of different way. Maybe the acquisition might stop to a certain extent. Like me, my 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 Tokyo Japanese could be fossilized at the end, then I just simply use my 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 Tokyo Japanese. So everybody will be having the same issues. But moving back to the topic, I'm happy to have the putting out the main topic uh, for the expatriate. The community members, especially with uh, my, my idea is based on the, the immigrants from the South, South, Asian, South Asian countries like in, uh, India, Pakistan, or Bangladesh, and so on. And they are quite, quite mobile, moving around. And they have their network, not local, but global network. And uh, whenever that happens, then you, you go and uh, you go and get a better job. Then actually they they have they are they're having their network which doesn't have, doesn't have anything to do with any other ethnicity. 
And uh, then the reason why I put this uh, a nice big poster on the right is uh, the, the kind of Japanese kimono looking with uh, the hat on. It's uh, uh, the, the, the version of the Indian curry, Indian restaurant in, uh, in Chichib in Saitama, looking very strange through the Japanese eye, but she has a good character. Then she owned this restaurant and a chef from India. Okay, they, they are actually moving from one place to another. Like the one time they're working in, say, Yokohama for a couple of years, they have a new offer from, say, Chichibu in a rural area of Saitama. Then they go and stay several years. Then the next day they have an offer from, say, Narita, which is Narita Airport, the biggest airport in Tokyo. Then they move around, you know, cross the prefecture boundaries. And they just easily go back to their, their home country, India, and uh, logistics too, and all the spices and all the ingredients they you know, ship to the Japan and they have their own market. The price set is quite different too. If you go to Japanese, say, you know, decent supermarket, if you buy the nice spices, it's cost like triple or four, four times more than the one that you get at spice shop owned by Indian people you know, in different parts of the communities. That gives you the ideas of the maybe uh, or the kind of the background image or ideas of these communities. Maybe I think, yeah, this is another thing that I need to share uh, about the workplaces. I mean, the reason why we have these, so the piece of the you know, Japanese or foreigners in the country is that we needed laborers uh, working for the factories. So whenever you have the expatriate communities, you can easily find factories, say, Sony, Sharp, Honda, Toyota, whatever manufacturing companies has a huge size of factory and they need laborers. Then they, especially those who have an association with the Japanese ancestry and have a better chance to be in the country, then they do ask people to come over to get a proper job. So this kind of a procedure make them coming and coming, coming, coming. coming. So the uh, shop in Aikawa, which I've been to for some time now, La Miel de Aikawa, I don't know, okay. Actually, it opened about 16 years ago. And um, they, they sell items uh, being bought from the Peru. And uh, then so the customers actually, they come to get customers in, you know, in China uh, with the staff in Spanish. And uh, when I went there, and um, in Japanese, making the order, say, Kind of my broken Spanish, or maybe they kind of the Spanish I try to speak up, and then they they notice I'm Japanese and they switch language to Japanese and they can start doing more of them for Japanese. I think. Then in talking about the kind of the ethnic study uh, in Japanese context nowadays, uh, we have migrants which expanded eventually eventually areas, but the way to get an area. It's something from the you know from the you know you know from somebody's stories and if you the story there in Japan. So if you say oh you have this partners they give you their chances to the foreigners to be uh giving an uh, offer like the cheaper price for that monthly there, they go, they stay, then you get a friends or relatives coming together. Okay. Then doesn't mean that they they create a community. They doesn't mean that they create neighborhood. They have certain the the area <laughs> this nation say mentioned in mention, 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 uh, Tokyo where they get together buying stuff. Then they go home by taking train to go to the suburb, but taking about another an hour, one and a half an hour, and then they they go back home. So when I visit this place, if you can export a couple of shops, uh, then you can see the people in the shop, but the residential area somewhere around the area, and I'm not, not easy for a researcher like myself to get uh, to know where exactly I should go and asking for their help or for their understanding to help them and do the research activities. I did a survey, uh, the, one of the uh, project surveys last year, uh, targeting up the uh, targeting up Nepalese, uh, Filipino, Chinese, and Koreans, uh, aged between twenties and forties, 
then we somehow collect this, this quantity about the 50 Nepali, 100 Filipinos, uh, 150 from the Chinese employees. It is not really easy uh, to conduct web surveys to non Japanese uh, respondents uh, because of the, uh, the service that the web, web survey company provides are quite limited. And uh, then, and also they, as we wanted to get responses in their languages, like the, you know, they, like the police, by Nepalese respondents or the Tagalog uh, by Filipinos, actually that service is not really available. Uh, and today only one company can provide the service in the country. And that is only the case for the 1500 Nepalese Filipinos, and another company that did a phone survey for the Chinese Nepali. So the language choice uh, uh, something to do with what they do in their life, uh, like the bureaucratic process, hospital, pharmacy, haircuts, religions, and mental calculations. And uh, then we ask which language they do in their daily life in Japan. Uh, this is uh, the result for the part from five four ethnic groups. Uh, to say Japanese. Yeah. And uh, then it kind of is quite uh, frequent use uh, uh, by most of the uh, respondents in the four, uh, four domains, uh, like the bureaucratic process, hospital, pharmacy, haircut. But for, for the religions, mental calculations, uh, the Nepalese don't use, didn't use, say, say they use Japanese. And uh, of others, uh, Filipino says right, Japanese at a very low, low rate, and Korean Chinese people give a different picture. The ethnic languages, meaning uh, the Nepalese for the Nepalese, Tagalog for Filipinos, Korean for Korean, and Chinese or Mandarin for the Chinese. Then overall, it's a low rate. Uh, they think that doesn't make sense to use their own ethnic language, uh, except for the religions. For the mental calculation. Mental calculation doesn't need any anyone with you anyway. For English, uh, for many cases for Filipinos, they end up using the, the English instead of their ethnic language, and uh, especially for the religions and uh, calculations. And actually, we have a data for Japanese, and I'm trying to get more responses from other ethnic uh, groups in different ways. Uh, this is uh, kind of the tentative result we have uh, got right now. Language variation, which is the main part for the being a variation in social English uh, events. Uh, I need to say that uh, for greater Tokyo areas, very few studies on language variation in Japanese and also the language language done yet. So I really, I really having a, uh, issues on how you get access to the speakers and how you get the spontaneous speech to give a close on eye or look at the way how they use the language and where you have and we can spot the variation there. But having said this, we have some relevant past literature uh, available, uh, but their studies have been done in other areas, especially in Osaka and neighboring areas. For instance, anthology that can be cut somewhere between. But I think this is uh, the, uh, the report by the Kim Jiong san uh, in uh, reports in, uh, in the early 2000 uh, about the use of the uh, verb negation. Uh, they, if you have ever studied Japanese, if you negate the, the action like the, to eat, tabe, to, you want to negate it, uh, tabe, okay. that nine variants uh, is found. It's only three speakers going in about the mid 1910s or early 1920s, the first generation uh, Koreans living in the Kinji Khan. They recorded about the age of the seven, eight, uh, about the end of the 1990s or early 2000s. And then based on two hours spontaneous speech. They gave a very spontaneous spontaneous speech. In most of the 9 or 10, they favor the original dialect features of variants like Hun and Hen. Hun and Hen is in many ways are actually the variants of the variables. Sometimes they you know, have some grammatical differences, grammatical meanings, differences, but that's really not the same. Yeah. But the point is that they don't use the Tokyo Japanese features, 
Now, here, you go, you know, you know, you know, you go there. And also, this is quite, uh, quite, uh, how do you say, uh, quite common that if you, if you ask, if you talk to Japanese speakers in that region, also about Kobe, and talking about negation, they don't use Tokyo variants. They, they kind of been thinking of the uh, negation as a, the, the, the most, you know, representative of famous features in the dialect. So they say negation on the top of the list. So they don't want to use the nine values, but that apply also for the Koreans in living in Osaka. And uh, actually, I could detect the one case in uh, Chinese, Mandarin, maybe Taiwanese, maybe from uh, Fan in, in Yokohama, China. Uh, they use all of the, uh, the Chinese pronouns to go uh, and uh, uh, here the number one and two will be uh, with me and wo uh, uh, are not really uh, using Japanese uh, personal pronouns in the data discourse. No quantitative study done, uh, only the descriptive work. Conducted by this Kara Nomura, uh, uh, Nomura, and uh, but we stopped working on the Chinese in Yokohama anymore. So we haven't got a data yet about how to characterize the Japanese or Chinese. Or, but this is a, uh, uh, if you are not Chinese, then you see the, uh, well, yeah, or it's no, that name, your dekara, uh, it could be a mixture of two languages, one district. So it's a good study for the port switching, but port switching the kind of the traditional uh, stage to either to the to the majority Japanese or the other way around. We don't know yet. Uh, Portuguese in Shigaken, uh, actually the uh, Nakamizu Ellen uh, is my academics, the elder sister from the Osaka. Uh, she carried out a PhD study for the, for the Japanese spoken by laborers uh, of the, from the Brazil, uh, engaging the companies or factories in Shigaken, that are also in the Western part of Japan. Uh, she actually is currently uh, based in Korea, uh, not in Japan. And as I see that she hasn't continued the study uh, uh, on her own, so no one actually has, can make any real-time study uh, to examine uh, the current situation. But she said that the, uh, as they need the data, they use Japanese only uh, for one place, uh, they would basically use Portuguese to each other uh, in most, most the most domains in their life. And uh, they, she actually detects many uh, examples of sport switching. And uh, but she detects some frequent Japanese words that something to do with their working or working environments. Like the yakin, I have a lot of yakin, like the working at night, and kumitate, like constructions or kensa examinations. But, and also, she did some studies on the use of uh, the polite forms or the plain form in Japanese, like the honorific, and uh, then they're not in the style shifting studies, but not really uh, looking into any variation itself. So. In Spanish, uh, as Yoshihomi san, this uh, kind of the description of the Spanish speaking community in Japan uh, in, uh, in the mid 2000s, with uh, raising only, only a couple of examples uh, about the, the, the features that she detected. This is more like the gamba piando. The gamba is to, to work well, to work hard. Yeah. Then the gamba teru, it could be the Japanese. Te teru te, te te form as I'm showing the uh, progressive uh, spectral markers, but the maybe same one would be ando in Spanish should be uh, affixed to the gambate the Japanese word uh, is te form. But this is so you show me some there, you can see can find this kind of the use of the mixture of two languages, but didn't really provide any specific examples in the writing. So it's better to ask that or have that in the meeting we have. Uh, about any 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 data, but at, at this moment, no data available. But this kind of example, like the Gamba Teando, uh, this kind of the found in uh, Japanese American communities, like the uh, giving an uh, example, like the to write a letter, writing a letter, or like the Japanese verb to write is Haku. 
you like to say progressive or we have to say hacking. You are writing on it, you have you are writing. But that's a hacking. Hack is in Japanese hard to write, haku. The in is from the progress marker in. Then if you if you, if you wrote a letter, say I uh you know I mean uh, let's say uh uh haku the letter. It's a road lay lay like E D. It has its mark added to the Japanese part. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, the thing that is, she told me in San Francisco several years ago. But I don't know if anything happens in Japan or not. But getting this kind of the impression of an uh, example, giving me a chance in the OL, maybe you can find that some feature there. But I now know that are better. So the uh Ape uh, in the uh the the Japanese or Peruvians uh in a uh, uh, girl in a uh, uh, she's a YouTuber. Uh actually she her sister uh, working at this cafe down uh, yeah. And I hope that uh, I think that they saw my little bit let me talk and I'd like to give you chances to uh, to listen to uh, so I hope the sound should be okay. But let me know. <laughs> And we can use the other one. We can use the other one. We can use the other one. Then she has the Swedish and Japanese and still talking. Okay, okay, so okay. Moving back, should I? Um, I don't know what the impression you had, but but in Japan, if you're talking about Spanish speakers, actually, yeah, actually, I had my student from Argentina who finished his PhD. Uh, he took me, I took him to this ICAB and we talked about the Spanish speakers in Japan, and he said, uh, majority of them are Peruvians. Uh, they have the Japanese and this relationship I and mean, uh, the community in Japan. So you can't really find any speakers. You can, you know, you have, you know, Bolivians, Paraguay, you know, Peruvians everywhere in the country. But talking about size of the, you know, speakers is number one with the Peruvians. But they, they're having a comparison with the Spanish man country in South America. The Peruvian Spanish is more like uh, a key state. No, it's no accent. You get very normal Spanish Spanish. They from their articulation, you have to articulate the vowel well. No distinctive accent like the Argentina Spanish. They are uh, like the Uruguay Argentina Spanish sounds like the same, or maybe different from the Mexico and uh, so on and so forth. So I 
ask him to pay attention a little bit more on the how they speak the Spanish. But he Spanish language, Spanish language, but I'm not really sure if that would be enough or not. And I really need anybody um, to speak in the public too. So the looking at the different signs of uh, you know communities and uh, also the sun case sun preliminary survey results. And I want to have kind of the, the discussion over you can you can label multicultural cultural Tokyo Japanese or not. Actually, the notion of cultural London English is widespread and well studied in a uh, uh, in a multi British social linguist. And uh, then I think that I hear a lot of stories from the one of the collaborators and uh, about the situation in London and also the situation in Japan is quite different. And uh, they thinking about the sentence itself doesn't show enough, you know, enough, like it's a very small number of percentage. So, you know, it's not really to, it's not something that you can really make a direct comparison. But it doesn't mean that, you know, you, 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 you can ignore this, this group of people uh, who command their, their, their spoken Japanese or spoken languages, their languages in their life in Japan. And that would be, Leading to say, you know, to kind of the maintenance of the Spanish or the maintenance of say Portuguese, Nepalese among them, spending several years, then they go, or they stay like in some two decades, three decades, then getting their children, then they go to the Japanese school, their their school, and do interact with people then what happen to what. So the also the multicultural London English is kind of the multi uh, multi ethnic and that ethnic or kind of label given, and in terms of the multi ethnic that could be the positive indeed to to be applied in Japanese context, but I'm not really sure if I can I can really uh, examine and demonstrate well on the how they reconstruct our system of syntactic changes and so on and so forth. As the we don't have the Japanese don't have that diverse system in terms of the Japanese phonology, and uh, most impactful features there without money. But Tokyo Japanese, the greater Tokyo areas, don't have that much variation itself, uh, even at more syntactic level, where we have bunches of the variation in other parts of the country. Plus, they uh, uh, we have the uh, Standard variety too. So, nativization should be one of the things that should be considered. If the community continues, then disability could be the one that targeting the younger speakers, that the video which I demonstrate to you, and uh, then then see how the Japanese sounds like to the Japanese linguists like myself, even though their Japanese sounds like really, really like the Japanese. Language. And also the possibility of the Tokyo dialect with other region. And uh, then it's going to interact with Spanish communities in Japan and uh, their, their speakers, and uh, maybe establishing their, their own uh, language situations and their own language varieties. I didn't mention about many Pakistani speaking communities and uh, the Urdu or maybe other languages I should make it, but they, they have lived in the country for. Several, not several, kind of couple of decades now. So there would be something that would be the starting point to pay a um, close attention to the uh, speakers. So at the last slide, I'd like to the share the slide and asking for the help for the sharing that the uh, recording for any you know the, any collaborative work. Uh, if you if you if you're interested in as. As I mentioned earlier, uh, you know, I, I ended up starting this project and uh, interested in the language variation itself, and uh, maybe from different aspects too. And uh, then, but uh, because of the Japanese linguistics, society nowadays are uh, putting more emphasis on the descriptive work. And no, no, actually, the social linguists actually are getting a smaller community now. So we like to encourage the you know the young scholars, graduate students, at the same time of the scholars that the like the everybody here, uh, uh in the both and going online too, uh, to see how this uh, topic sounds to you. And if any any help or anything that you can offer, 
they are delighted to, to hear about it. And uh, please contact me or talk to me uh, if you're interested. And I think I'm really much to hear about it. And I mean, maybe talking somehow more, uh, no, my, my personal research topics out terms of the, the achievement uh, at the plenary talk uh, next week at the Australian Military Society Conference. So if you're interested in that part, please uh, be kind enough to show me up. And I'll be happy to see your face in there too. Apology is a kind of long thank you, but this is acknowledgement. And thank you very much for your Um, I'll turn off the recording for the questions.